Amen. The peace. Peace, peace, wonderful peace. Amen. Peace, the gift of God's love. Amen. Coming over here today, I stopped by uh, Faith Baptist Church and stepped in to pay my last respects to Brother Gary Boyles, who served the Lord many years in our church in Spencer. And I thought of a good man of God, and just a few months ago, his wife went to heaven. And they're, they're in heaven together, and, and I, I looked at his family, and, and I looked at the church there, and I, I realized there was a peace there that only Jesus can give. Amen. I'll tell you what, God's people die different. God's people, we, when we leave this world, we can have the, the peace knowing that Jesus paid it all and we're going to heaven. Our, our, if we're going to stand, we must have an attitude of peace. You know, your attitude determines your altitude. In heavenly places. Notice he said in chapter 2 and verse 13. Boy, the Bible's good, isn't it? In chapter 2 and verse 13, he says this. He says, but now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, Amen. who hath made both one, hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. Do you have an attitude of peace today? I'm not talking about a cocky attitude. I'll tell you one thing I've learned about salvation. It'll humble you. I mean, what, are, what is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him, that God would love me? I'm so glad that my Father in heaven told of his love in the book he has given. Wonderful things in the Bible I see. Oh, what a wonder that Jesus loved me. I'll tell you, our attitude should be one of peace. We hear much about peace through strength, but it's his strength, not our strength. In Ephesians 5.18, be not drunk with wine, the scripture says, but, but be filled with the Spirit. Amen. Be not drunk with wine, but be, 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 be filled with the Spirit. Be being filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. A lot of times our attitude, you know, we're taking false readings of where we are with God. You know, we come away from church. And we had an evangelist at our church today, and man, he preached up a storm. He got all over me, preacher, about pride and, and uh, our isolationism and how we're not reaching people with the gospel and all of that. What made me think about this there's a lot of people to reach in Looneyville. There's a lot of people to reach in Clay. There's a lot of people to reach in Summersville. There are a lot of police, people to reach in the Kanawha Valley. There are a lot of people to reach in Newton and Walbach and Big Otter and Clover and uh, Flat Fork and, uh, and, and Tariff and Linden. There's people to reach. There's people everywhere. Like a fellow said, the woods are full of them. Oh, God, give us a burden. Sometimes we take a false reading. We think, well, I'm... I'm uh, I'm as good as the next guy. And then the devil hits us with a sucker punch and we realize that we're empty and we need God. I think of a bus we bought a few years ago. In fact, I think of a lot of buses I bought. But I think of this bus we bought a few years ago and it was running good, Brother John. We'd had another international and, and, and we'd gotten this thing and and um, in fact, I think we bought it from Roan County. All the buses we've gotten over here have been good buses, really. And, and I was driving this bus and, on a Sunday. And, and before we took out that morning, I, I, I looked at the gas gauge, and it was right down there between an eighth and a quarter of a tank. And I said, well, that, that doesn't really mean an eighth or a quarter of a tank. It means more than that. We've got, we probably got... Tank and the guy said, "Wait, are you sure you just bought this bus?" I said, "Oh yeah, oh." oh. I said, "These, these tanks, they always have more than what." Now don't get ahead of me here, Mail Street. But anyway, we drove the route, went back, dropped the kids off. We're coming back. I'm coming up South Hill, coming into Ripley, and all of a sudden, man, that thing quit on me, and I thought, man. Must be the distributor. Must be the alternator. Must be. I mean, I thought of all these things it could be. And the guy that was riding the bus, he said, uh, Brother Ricky, you, you don't reckon it's out of gas, do you? I said, no, there's no way it could be out of gas. I said, I, check, I checked the, uh, the gas gauge before we left. I said, it said we, I said, it still shows eighth of a tank. We've got all kinds of gas in there. Guess what? I was out of gas. I had to swallow some crow on that one, on the t you know, and all that. But, you know, we, we do that. We do that. 
I mean, we leave the Bible out of our lives and we think, I can just go out and preach like I always did. We, we leave prayer out of our lives. We think we can teach a Sunday school class without God. We leave, we leave uh, I mean, the, thing, the necessary things to do uh, to walk with God and we think, well, Lord, uh, man, things are going well. I'll call you when I need you. No, we need Him every hour. Amen. Oh, God, give us an attitude as one of peace. If we're going to do all to stand. Secondly, not only should our attitude be one of peace, but our armor needs to be in place. Amen. Our armor needs to be in place. Look at the armor. You know the armor well. But let's read about the armor today quickly. He said in Ephesians chapter 6, he said in verse 13, withstand. He said stand. He said stand therefore. And in verse 14, he says having your loins girt about with truth. Right. Having on the breastplate of righteousness. He says, having your loins girt about with truth. He's, he's talking about the, the belt that held the sword in place. The, the belt that held, on, held it all in place. Hey, the thing that holds it all in place, of course, is truth. And Jesus Christ is the truth. And the, the scripture says, and having on that breastplate of righteousness. The reason many don't stand is when those fiery darts come, they don't have the breastplate of righteousness on. They've got good works on. They've got church membership on. They've got a baptism on. They've got, they've got a heritage that they inherited from their parents. But listen, God has no grandchildren. We must have that breastplate of righteousness on. That imputed righteousness that only God can give. Your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take that helmet of salvation. Aren't you glad for that helmet of salvation? And may I say that helmet fits everybody perfectly. Amen. Say, so I don't know if that helmet will fit me. It'll, it'll fit you. Amen. You say, preacher, would Jesus save me? That helmet of salvation fit just fine on your head. Hey, that breastplate of righteousness will fit just fine. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And he says, the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Oh, listen, if we're going to stand and continue to stand, we must make sure that the armor is in place. Amen. That armor is a, an offensive armor. It's offensive and it is offensive. Amen. Jesus said, all that live godly in me will, will suffer persecution. Amen. But none of that armor is for the rear. You know that. I don't have to tell you that. But may I say that armor needs to be in place. In verse 11, he says, put on the whole armor of God. It's a call to soldiers to get up, to be ready, to get ready. And then in verse 13, he says, take unto you. He says, not only put it on, but he says, take it up in lieu of fighting. Amen. We're on the battlefield for our Lord. It's a battlefield. That's right. It's a battlefield. It's not a playground. It's a battlefield. You know that. When you go to work in the morning, it's a battlefield. When you get up tomorrow, listen, everything, everything that you stand for will come under attack by Satan and the world and the flesh and the devil. It's not just for display. You know, every soldier looks good in a parade. But he says, take unto you the whole armor of God. Amen. Yes, we need to have our armor on. Have it all just right. And put it all on right. But he says, take it on in lieu of fighting the sword of the Spirit. May I say this book will get the job done. This book, not just the, any book, this King James Bible will get the job done. Our armor must be in place. Withstand, we're under attack. To stand. I mean, when the smoke clears, the victor's still standing. He said, stand therefore. Amen. Well, there have been times when the fiery darts are coming. The fiery darts are coming, Brother Al. The fiery darts are coming, Brother Lake. The fiery darts are coming, Brother Bradley. The, the fiery darts are coming, Brother Davis. They're coming, and all we can do, I mean, they're coming so hard, all you can do is just stand. But thank God we can stand. Amen. Make sure your armor's in place. Have an attitude of peace. I'm saved. I know it. My armor's in place. My armor's in place. It's a field of battle. You know why? Because every day is a new battle. Amen. Over in 1 Samuel, remember young David slew a giant named Goliath, nine feet six inches tall. You know the story well. He slew that giant. But over in 2 Samuel chapter 21, there were some relatives of that giant that came visiting. 
They weren't all dead. It was a great victory the day that Goliath fell. The people chanted, uh, Saul has slain his thousands, but David his ten thousands. God did a great work there. But he said in verse 15 of 2 Samuel 21, you don't have to turn there, but he says this, Moreover, the Philistines had yet war again with Israel. Why do we have to put on the armor? Because the giant you slay today may have some offspring coming your way tomorrow. Yeah, and he says he came again, and David waxed faint. And look in verse 16, or notice in verse 16, And Ishbenenob, which was of the sons of the giant, thought to have slain David, and Abishai killed him. And then it says in verse 18, It came to pass after this that there was again a battle with the Philistines at Gob. Then Sibachai slew Soph, which was of the sons of the giant. And there was again a battle in Gob with the Philistines, where Hanan slew the brother of Goliath the Gittite. And then in verse 20, And there was yet a battle again in Gath, where was a man of great statue. It says he had six fingers and six toes. They just kept coming and kept coming and kept coming and kept coming. You ever feel that way? I'll tell you what. I'll just, keep, just keep the armor on. Make sure your armor's in place. Keep on standing and just let them keep coming. Ishbenenob comes. Uh, Soft comes. Uh, Goliaths come. They all come. And little ones and big ones. But I want you to know you can be more than conquerors and I can be more than conquerors through Him that loved us. Amen. Put on the whole armor of God. Put on the whole armor of God. Hey, the giants just kept coming. There's more than one battle. Amen. Right. And finally, let me say this. Having done all, if we're going to continue to stand, yes, our attitude must be one of peace. Our armor has to be in place. But number three, our, our anticipation, our anticipation is one of His provision. Amen. We anticipate victory. I like to win, don't you? Amen. We all like to win. We all like to win. And the Bible says that you and I are winners either way. Yeah. Paul said, I have a desire to depart and be with Christ, which is far better. We don't understand that now. We see through a glass darkly, but it's far better to be with Christ. Amen. Paul said, if I stay here, I'm a winner. If I go there, I'm a winner. Amen. We're a winner either way. Yeah. This is the best we'll ever, this is the worst we'll ever experience. We have all of heaven to look forward to. But my friend, today if you're lost, this is the best thing you'll ever see. Get ready for the next world. Get ready for the next country. Our anticipation must be of His provision. What was Paul's prayer in Ephesians chapter 6 from a prison cell? What did Paul say? Pray that I can get out of jail. He didn't pray that. He had an anticipation of something far greater. He said in verse 18, praying always, notice with me in Ephesians 6, 18, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Paul was thinking of others. Amen. You know, how do you know that? Because of what he said. He said, we're praying, we're supplicating, we're, we're watching and we're persevering for all saints. And then he said in verse 19, and for me, Amen. he was second. Well, if we'll place Jesus first, He'll bless us. The anticipation of His provision. Paul's prayer was not to be freed, but notice prayer and supplication and watching. He was persevering, having done all to stand. When I finish out, and when you finish out, may, may our prayer be, God, let nothing be left in the bucket. I used to go up, my grandparents lived up in Webster County, and we'd drop that bale, we'd walk out there on a cold October morning, drop that bale, or even on a day like this, you'd drop that bale down in that, in that well and, and bring it back up, and it'd be frosted up, and, and you'd let, flip that little thing on there and, and fill up that galvanized bucket, and it was cold to the touch. The well never went dry. As we drop that, as we drop that uh, baler down in that well, and, uh, and 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 that cold, refreshing water, and we'd we'd open that up, and man, it would just go and fill up that bucket. That's why I want to finish out, Brother John. I just want to go out in a gush, Amen. not just a trickle. Man, go out in a gush, Amen. anticipating His provision. I don't know what tomorrow holds, but I'll tell you this. 
I anticipate His provision. He's given me the Word of God, the Spirit of God, the armor of God, the people of God, the prayers of the people of God. He, we are more than conquerors through Him that loved us. He's given us His Holy Spirit. He's given us His promises. I anticipate His provision. You and I have some things to face. We don't know what those things are, but I'll tell you what, I anticipate His provision. Amen. He's got my back. Right. I hadn't thought about this till the other day for a long, long time. It's kind of a worldly illustration. Years ago, I played a little bit of baseball down on Elk River. and We had minor league and little league. Then we had senior little league. Senior league went up through, I think, age 15 or something like that. We were playing senior league ball one summer. Back then, you know, Pinch had a team, Elkview had a team, Blue Creek had a team, Big Chimney had a team. Clendenin had a couple of teams. Of course, Clendenin was kind of everybody's rival. We were playing, we were, I played for the cycle shop, and we were, we were playing one of those Clendenin teams up there one day at Herbert Hoover. <laughs> I don't even remember who won, but it got kind of chippy all through the game. I mean, we're, you know, and we all went to school together, but we're just getting chippy, you know. And, you know, a little extra elbow here, a slide here with the cleats up, you know, just a little extra. And it got, you know, a few pitches, a little chin music, you know, and uh, one got away or two got away and around the head. And, and so by the end of the game, I don't remember who won, but we decided we we're going to fight. <laughs> You know how you are, you know, I, I wasn't even saved then, but you're full of vim and vigor, vinegar. Fifteen years old, I knew everything. So I got me a ball bat. I start over toward home plate to meet that other team. While I'm walking over there, I looked over my shoulder. I want to make sure uh, somebody had my back, you know. <laughs> sure enough, the whole team came with me, Bert. Yeah. Pretty stupid, wasn't it? And old Billy Mace, I just preached Billy Mace's funeral a few months ago. He was a good friend. Old Billy was our big old catcher. I want to make sure Billy was behind me. But he was the biggest guy on the team. He had, uh, he, he had on his, uh, his uh, chest, he, had his, he left his chest protection on. And he had his shin guards in one hand, something else in another. Another guy was behind me. I wasn't going to use that ball bat. I didn't want to fight. I just wanted to put on a good show. So we walked over there, we're chipping and chirping and saying things, and the other team comes over there, and I'm looking over my shoulder, hoping our coach, oh, Blake Woods, I was hoping Blake was around, because I didn't really want to fight. <laughs> but if we did have to fight, I knew I had the whole team behind me. I had my catcher behind me. Uh, we, we had the center fielder behind me. I had the, the back, I had them all behind me, and I was really hoping the coach would come in and interfere. And thank God, uh, just before we had to get into it really, here come the coach. The coaches came in, broke it all up, and we put on a real good show. It was really good. <laughs> well, one thing about it, I did know this. I knew, I knew someone had my back. Hey, if you go, go, go into battle, it's good to know someone's got your back. Amen. It's good to know that you're not in the foxhole by yourself. It's good to know. It's good to know. I remember Charles Booth. Many of you knew Charles, David Booth, and Farrell Booth, and all of them. I remember when Charles, that's one of those things I, I just leave to God. We were serving the Lord at Mount Pleasant Baptist Church years ago. Charles Booth went through the hottest part of Vietnam. I mean, he was an Army Ranger walk point. I mean, the hardest fighting, toughest fighting. And God brought him through all of that, saved his soul. And God was using him. And he went through all of that. And Charles died in his driveway from, from a forklift accident. Now, you know what? That's Romans 8, 28, Brother Alby. I don't understand those things. And I remember at, at his funeral, a fellow from Montana drove all the way from Montana and he said, you know, he said, he said I sat many nights in, in the downpour of rain in Vietnam. He said, with my back against Charlie's back. And he said, we each had our, each other's back. And he said, he's a, he's a friend like no friend ever could be. And I'll never forget that. But you know what? 
There's someone's got your back much greater than that. There's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. His name is the Lord Jesus Christ, the captain of the host. And he's got your back. He'll make provision. And we ought to anticipate his provision. Hey, when we're going through the valley, we ought to anticipate God showing up. We ought to anticipate God answering prayer. We ought to anticipate, God, you're going to save somebody here. You're going to answer my prayer. Lord, I'm asking you. I'm persevering. I'm pouring out that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the gospel, that I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Amen. Having done all to stand. Amen. Having done all to stand. Could this not be a, a big part of Paul's having done all? Right. Eddie Goddard, who's been in heaven for a few years now, Eddie led me to Christ in 1972. Eddie used to preach a sermon. I don't remember where it was from. But he had this outline. He'd say that Christians should outlove the world. He said Christians should outlive the world. And in other words, we ought, to, we ought to show the love of Christ to others and persevere and having done all to stand. We, when people see us, they see God's love and they see a, a quality of life that we outlive them. And he, he said, well, just, just by your life, people want to, ought to, want to know and, and desire to have your Savior. But he said this. He said, we're going to outlast the world. Amen. We're going to outlast the world. Having done all to stand. When it's all said and done, we're going to be standing. In fact, when it's all said and done, we're going to be riding a horse back from heaven with the Lord Jesus Christ. We're winners. Hey, we're winners. Put on the armor. Pick up pick up the shield of faith. Pick up the word of God, the sword of the spirit. Wrap yourself in the love of God. Wrap yourself in the promises of God. Ask the spirit of God to fill you and just say, God, I'm going to persevere. I'm not quitting. I'm not quitting. I'm not quitting. I anticipate your provision having done all. Listen, when you're tired, not of the fight, but we do get tired in the fight sometimes. Amen. Just keep standing. Amen. Let's stand with our heads bowed today. Just a great thought, a great truth today. God help us today, I pray. Lord, having done all that we know to do, just to let go and let God have His way. Thank you, God, that, that you provide you answer prayer. You strengthen us. You encourage us. You give us the, the fruit of the Spirit, love and joy and peace and long-suffering, goodness and gentleness and meekness and faith. Thank you for the armor that you give us. You don't send us into battle without something to fight with. But oh, Lord Jesus, we think of Joshua who saw that captain of the host. His sword was drawn. His side was defined. Lord, I thank you that we have a side to serve on, your side. That you're the way, the truth, the life. Lord, I pray that today you'd help us to continue in these last days to stand. May we be found faithful in Jesus' name. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed, and maybe someone could play the piano. I don't know uh, about invitation, but just maybe just come and play the piano verse. And, um, and as, as the piano plays, maybe God has spoken to your heart you know, we get tired sometimes. It's hard to know what to do. Just keep standing. Keep standing while God refills your tank and know that He's got your back. He'll help you. You come and pray. Maybe you're praying for a lost person. Maybe you're coming praying and asking God to help you. Maybe you're here today and not sure about your salvation. You, don't have, you can't have an attitude of peace. You're not sure you're saved. Why don't you come and make that right today? Make sure that you're saved. Maybe you'd just like to come and pray for revival. Pray for revival. I think of what happened yesterday in El Paso and then again in Dayton. And there'll be the great debate again about guns and all of this stuff. But we know the, prob the heart of the problem is a problem of the heart. People need the Lord. They need Christ. I'm praying that churches and pastors and the salt that's in those cities will come forth and be able to win many to Christ during this difficult time. Our nation's in a 
in a great upheaval, great divide. Let's just keep standing. Keep standing. Brother Burr. God bless you. Oftentimes we don't stand very good. There's some things we ought to be against. Amen. We ought to make it plain that we stand against it. Uh, I live about 50 miles from the seat of corruption in the United States of America. It's called the Capitol. It's a terrible place. But the reason it's terrible is because we failed. Amen. We, we, I mean, lost people sin. That's their nature. You know that. You've been there. It's our responsibility to change things. Amen. We haven't done very well. I hate to think back to the past when I was accustomed to seeing the baptism of water stirred every service. People being saved. Wasn't unusual. You could open up a storefront and on Sunday you'd have a crowd. You wouldn't have to say anything. Just put a sign up. Usually it's a bunch of disgruntles, but it was still, it's still a crowd. They stay with you. We've lost our salt and we need to get back with that whole armor. Some of us have some chinks in our armor. We've let God down. We've let ourselves down. And God will use you if you'll let Him. That's what we ought to be letting God use us. Do all we can to prepare for it. Let God use us. I want to encourage you to do that. You can go back and change. Some young people here go to school somewhere. Y'all go to school? You're out of school? You do, don't you? You go to school. All of you in school? Y'all? Yeah. Are there any lost people in your school? You have any lost people in your school? You do. Well, how are they going to get saved if you don't talk to them a little bit? Some years ago, I'll, I don't want to keep you up, but some a few years back, I had a meeting in Clay with Brother Ralph Davis and uh, was there to do some soul winning. And I remember the very first day we went out and we were started down the road and I said, uh, who lives there? So don't worry about them. They're saved. They're Christians. I said, we're going to stop anyway. And uh, we stopped. They weren't saved. We went down a little further. And the same thing over and over and over again. He kept telling me, well, they're saved. But the day before I left, he got up and told his church. He said, I found out there's a lot more lost people here than I thought there was. And in your community, there's a lot of lost people. And what brother preacher preached about today you need to get that preparation and go tell somebody about Jesus and love them into the family of God it'll work if you'll do it brother John what else am I supposed to do take another offering <laughs> yeah so and um, we'll be meeting back here tomorrow night Tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock. Tomorrow night. And uh, it'll be cooler tomorrow night. It's pleasant today. I don't think it's too bad today. So be here tomorrow night if you possibly can. I'll take a... they get you to promise to come, but then I don't want you to lie. So I won't do that. We're glad that you're here, though. Thanks. Yes, sir. Some CDs in the back. Some CDs? We have CDs. We have a special on your CDs. Special, yeah. We're uh, the CDs free, but the plastic covers fifteen dollars. That's pretty good bargain. So you get the CD free, but you have to buy the plastic sure. cover. That's fifteen dollars, and that'll help them on their way. And we're glad for that. They're doing a good job. All right, brother Alvy.
Can you just can you close us in prayer?